Hi everybody, this is Boss from at Home, and today I want to talk about everything that happened while I was gone. So yeah, welcome to the show. Welcome to uh, Bossman at Home is what we're calling this. This is this is my home. This is my actual living space. My kitchen. Welcome to my kitchen, everyone. I am Kyle Bossman. And if you can't tell already, this will be a much more casual show than the previous show with my last name in the title. Uh, I'm shooting this and I am editing this and unfortunately it's going to look and sound that way. If I miss a week, it's okay. It's uh, We're doing this for fun. This is the free show. <laughs> the, I just want to talk about video games. So let's do that. Let's just talk about video games. A lot has happened since I've been away. I've been away for almost two months and Many things have gone down in the world of video games, so I thought it'd be a good time to play Big Whoop, Little Whoop. This is, of course, a segment in which we uh, look at a news story and we assess whether it's a Big Whoop, something that will make shockwaves throughout the world of video games for years to come, or whether it's a Little Whoop, you know, a baby sneeze at the beach. So let's start with this. Quantum Break launches day and date on PC. That's a Big Whoop. Funny note about independent production is that Ding, costs two US dollars. Who knew? Not every time, just the once. Uh, <laughs> this is a big deal because it, this was a big console exclusive. Even at, at Gamescom last year, the big trailer ends April 5th. Xbox One exclusive. You will need an Xbox to play this game. And that was the truth up until last month when a lot of, uh, it was like a preview event. You know, a lot of preview footage came out and also, hey, this is also coming out on PC on the same date. Uh, that is highly irregular, almost unprecedented for such a large console exclusive to launch on PC at the same time, so close to launch. That's weird, it's a big whoop. VR prices have been revealed. So we already knew the Oculus Rift was gonna be 599 US dollars, but since then we've learned that the HTC Vive is going to be 799 US dollars, but also include the cameras and the 3D controllers, and that the PlayStation VR would be 399 US dollars, but you do need a camera and you might need the Move controller, so there's also a package that costs 499 US dollars. Whatever, it's a lot of money. All of that is very expensive, it's a little whoop. I honestly think that VR could cost as much as jacuzzis and still be successful. <laughs> they could be hot tub money. It's a, VR, I mean, what's to understand? It takes you out of this world and puts you into a whole other 3D world where things are cool. I think you can be a cool person in that world. That's that's innately interesting. So yeah, to people who are unemployed like I am, it's not an option and that's a little sad. But generally, I think that there's nothing stopping VR at this point. They're already selling out everywhere. Th that it costs hundreds of dollars is okay and it is good and we have to just look on to the other people who are grinning with their 3D headsets and try to not live in jealousy. Sony developing a beefier PS4. Microsoft 2? That's a big whoop. That's as big whoop as they come. That's This is the talk of the town. Everybody's got a hot take on the PS4K. Uh, so what's happened here is, is uh, well, I guess, actually, Microsoft kind of started this first. Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, comes in saying, hey, uh, don't be surprised. Basically, we are going to do this. There will be a mid-generational leap for the Xbox console. And then after GDC, all these rumors leak out. First, Kotaku publishes this. Then Eurogamer publishes this this, then the Wall Street Journal publishes this. Basically, PlayStation 4K is happening. We have to accept it. This is all but confirmed. And so why this is a big whoop is, hey, look, Sony's on top right now. Sales-wise, they have a huge margin. Uh, PS4 is doing fine. To introduce a better PS4 makes the one we have now worse by nature. That's unavoidable. And so the fact that they're doing that, that they're willing to take that risk, that's a big whoop. Obviously, we'll have more on this to come in the coming months. This is going to continue being a big deal. Hi, everyone. Uh, I guess an advantage of doing this show uh, by myself is that when hot news drops, we can just 
handle it. And some hot news dropped, particularly about the PS4K on NeoGAF. I just saw this when I, I was importing my footage, and I was like, oh my goodness. So PS4K has basically been laid out uh, by an, a, a NeoGAF member named Osiris Black. And we know this person is legit because it says, Bish checked um, as a tag. And that generally means that uh, oof, this person's real. And so we have to accept all of these things as fact. I, you know, it's basically PS4K is going to cost four hundred dollars, and this is the craziest part. This is the most significant part for this discussion, at least. It was stated plainly and with no room for interpretation that there are developers that already have development kits for the PS4K, and that they are making games that will directly target and take advantage of the higher specs of the PS4K. It was also stated that these games will in fact work for the PS4, but with considerable sacrifices made to performance. Mm, that's a big whoop. That is... Oh, that's a huge whoop. So, if we're buying into these leaks, the best, the right version of God of War 4 is the PS4K version. We're all, we're all spending $400 again this fall. <laughs> I'm not... We'll talk about this more next week. Pokemon Sun and Moon announced. That's a little whoop. Now, I know what you're thinking. Kyle Bossman, he loves Pokemon. Of course this is going to be a big whoop. Nope. My love for Pokemon is exactly why this is a little whoop. Look at this announcement. This should be an event. This should be at least something. Instead, it is a, a you know, some concept art, some documentary style footage of concept art. Uh, titles, nothing. Nothing why, hey, this is what you can look forward to. This is why this one will be different. This was an event. This was a live streamed world event and this is what they did with it. X and Y had better treatment than this. I just feel like Pokemon is this huge franchise. Most people would die for a franchise like this. And it just, they, for some reason, they don't have the marketing budget that they should. Or maybe they have a huge marketing budget and those people are just like, hmm, I was thinking basically we show nothing. I don't know what their deal is. I don't get it. While we're on this little whoop, look at this little whoop. This is how the new Paper Mario game was revealed. You can look forward to playing Lost Reavers in the open beta version coming soon to Wii U. Next, let's paint the town red and just about every other color. In the Paper Mario series, we always challenge ourselves to bring something fresh to the action-adventure genre. I don't know, Bill, what is, that is, that's the equivalent of a, like, like, honey, there's a new carton of milk in the fridge. Also, I picked up a new Paper Mario. Paper, that should be a big deal. That should be a huge deal. Instead, you make it a little whoop. If you make it a little whoop, it's gonna be a little whoop. Getting worked up. Microsoft announces online crossplay with other consoles. That is a big whoop. Here's what's going on here. Uh, Microsoft said, hey everybody, for the first time ever, you'll be able to play Microsoft games online, Xbox games online, with other people on other consoles. Meaning, hey, and this was their example specifically, people playing Rocket League will be able to play people on PS4 and people on PC and people on Xbox One, all three combined. Now, uh, since then, it's, this has felt weird because Sony's just like, we've already been doing that and it hasn't really been implemented. And so I'm not sure if they're friends yet. So yes, if this becomes widely accepted, if two friends who used to be separated by their consoles of choice can play The Division together, that is a big whoop. Until it happens, I'm gonna call this a little whoop. Fable Legends canceled, Lionhead closed, that's a big whoop. Now, uh, Fable Legends itself, Probably not a big whoop, right? This was a free-to-play asymmetrical online multiplayer game. Sure, loosely based off the, the esteemed Fable franchise. Like, ugh, okay. Like, that game itself probably wasn't going to be hugely successful. However, you gotta look at how this game was advertised, what it was meant to be. I want to look at the CG intro that Microsoft did before their E3 press conference last year. This was a big deal. I loved this at the time, actually. To me, this was like a Nintendo-like appreciation for their characters. This is who we are. All these faces, these faces are exclusive to our platform. You got Agent Locke, you got Lara Croft, you got Marcus Phoenix, you got Fable Legends guy, and you got Master Chief. 
So yeah, Fable Legends was was one of the things that made this, hey, this is the greatest Xbox lineup we've ever had. Here are the pillars. This is what we stand upon. Yes, we're going to cancel this game. So that's what it feels like. It feels like that Mount Rushmore of Microsoft feels way different than it did back at E3. Uh, I'm sure we'll get a new, better uh, Mount Rushmore this year. There's plenty of games coming out this year. But for that game to be canceled so close to release, for Lionhead Studios to be shut down, Microsoft used to love my Lionhead. At E3, it'd be Lionhead's game. Here we are. Here's what we're working on. Here's Milo. Gone. Poof. That's weird. That That's weird. That's irregular. That is a big whoop. I should note, um, on the same day that those were shut down, uh, Press Play Studios was closed. That's a little whoop. Lastly, Evolution Studios shut down. If you're not familiar, this is a studio owned by Sony who made MotorStorm and Drive Club. And I'm gonna call this a big whoop. Uh, mostly because of Drive Club. I think this is an interesting story. It's a story of the PS4 we don't tell too much. When the PS4 uh, was shown at E3, we also got the news that, for the first time ever, people on PlayStation would have to pay to play online. Uh, for a PlayStation Plus, you need that to play online. But, hey everybody, it's okay, don't panic, because when the PlayStation 4 launches, you're getting this free game called Drive Club. Now, a uh, month before the PS4 launched, Drive Club delayed to early 2014. Delays continue until October of 2014 when Drive Club finally launches almost a year after its initial launch date, and it is a mess. It is riddled with technical errors. It is just not functioning as it is meant to. That hurts its reviews. Also, that free version, the PS Plus version, that doesn't come out until June of 2015. So it just had that against it. Yeah, it sold two million dollars, two million copies. Yes, it did do that. However, I just think it never recovered from that, from all of those expectations. I don't think the studio ever caught its breath. And I don't think PlayStation Plus ever looked the same. This whole generation, the since the launch of the PS4, if you remember, the game that replaced Drive Club was this, it was Contrast. I mean, no offense to the people who made Contrast, but this game is a little whoop. That's a textbook little whoop right there. And that is what PlayStation Plus has looked like since the launch of the PlayStation 4. You know, it's just, it's felt like this the whole time. And I think it's just weird when you look at what Xbox is doing with Games with Gold. It used to be a joke, now it's like, hey, Sunset Overdrive, baby! And Sony, I think, has to look at that, has to look at their competitor and say, oh, we are doing a worse job. Ergo, it is a big whoop that Evolution Studios was shut down. How's that for a conclusion? It's not, I can't even speak. I gotta, I gotta shake off the rust, everybody. That's the episode. That was, that's Bossman at home, everybody. Uh, please leave your comments below with your feedback. Let me know what you think of the show and this episode because it's a work in progress. We're just putting this together. Uh, if you were a fan of my old show, which used to end with bits, skits, and sketches of comedic nature, I have to tell you, again, shooting this, editing this alone, uh, we can't do stuff like that anymore. So I just wanted to alert you to that in case you were waiting for the end of this video for something very funny to happen. Uh, sorry about that. But yeah, uh, anything you have to say, uh, if you want me to wear the tie again, I can already tell you I tried it. It doesn't work. It's, I think when we're in the kitchen, I just have to, the hoodie is the uniform. It's the only thing that makes sense. If you're on Twitter, you can find me at Kyle Bossman. I'll be back. Uh, I'm not going to promise every week. I'll be back again. I'll do more of these when I can. Uh, in this case, it'll probably be next week, and I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Do you know how to work the copier? No. You'll fit in here just fine. And I thought moral choices were complicated.